Hi, in a previous video you saw how I got a, a upgraded home solar system from 3 kilowatts to 8 kilowatts and it's the quotation marks we're going to talk about today because thanks to LG I got 14 uh, brand new 370 watt neon 2 panels these were a pretty big upgrade from my the existing system I installed back in 2013 I think it was uh, like over seven almost eight years ago now uh, they were 250 watt panels and I had 12 of them now I've got 14 370 watts and I've also got uh, both systems running side by side so I've got 5.1 kilowatts uh, with these new ones nominal in quote marks this is what this video is about and the existing three kilo three kilowatt system and a lot of people are uh, pointed out in the comments to this video that hey you're not actually going to get the full 370 watts out of these you're only going to get 295 watt maximum why is it so? It's not just about solar insulation or solar irradiance, uh, as you call it, i.e. the amount of sun hitting uh, the panels, because I'm in Sydney here, and, well, our sun is notoriously harsh, and we do actually get the nominal 1,000 watts uh, per square metre or more uh, on certain days. So it certainly is possible to get 370 watts out of this, but as a lot of people pointed out, the um, Enphase uh, microinverters are supplied. The these are the IQ7 Plus are the ones that I got. And a lot of people point out that these are only 295 watt peak inverters. And sure enough, they are correct. If you go down here in the data sheet, and here it is, the IQ7 Plus. So it says here, commonly used module pairings, i.e. what panels is it suitable for? Panels from 235 watts to 440 watts in 60 cell, 72 cell configurations, blah, blah, or your maximum voltages, currents, and everything else. But down here, sure enough, peak output power, 295 VA. Volts times amps, that's watts, right? Let's just ignore any phase stuff. 295 watts peak output power and a maximum continuous output power of 290 VA. So I didn't actually know about how it's very common in the industry to actually do this because here in Australia it's very typical uh, like most people will probably use like a string inverter like the uh, I got the Sunny Boy inverter when I installed my 3 kilowatt system before 12 times uh, 250 watts is 3 kilowatts exactly I installed a 3 kilowatt inverter and that's uh, common as mud here in Australia that's you know pretty much standard industry practice we don't actually derate so it's an interesting question why you'd actually want to derate and it, it is an industry thing there's you know articles about this galore how to maximize solar project value using inverter clipping some people claim and probably rightly so that you might actually get increased energy output not power increased energy output i.e power over time increased energy output over the life of the system by actually using a derated microinverter, i.e. a 295 watt microinverter on a 370 watt panel in this particular case. It's called the DC to AC ratio right here. And for example, it might be 1.4 to 1. In my case, it's 295 watts peak divided by 270. That's about 80% or a 1.25 uh, DC to AC ratio. And that's like actually fairly average in the market. A lot of people claim and have seen systems or their own systems have been uh, derated by uh, like 1.5 1, 1 to 1, for example. So, you know, a much greater derating. And Enphase themselves actually have a uh, technical brief paper linked in down below for those playing along at home. Basically, it compares their uh, highest output microinverter, the IQ7A versus the IQ7 Plus that I've got in Australia. They actually have done specific tests about this. And this uh, derating thing, it's also called like oversizing. So you're oversizing the panels based on your inverter. So you might have, uh, you know, a five kilowatt worth of panels and you'll only get a three and a half or four kilowatt inverter. In my particular case, I've got uh, just over 5.1 kilowatts of uh, nominal panel power. We'll go into that versus the inverters, which are a total of at 295 watts times 14, uh, 4.13 kilowatts total. 
So apparently the CEE states that the uh, inverter nominal AC output power cannot be less than 75% of the array peak. So I'm at about 80%. So I'm above this uh, nominal CEC uh, figure. So 133% oversizing from DC input to output power. However, PD designers and installers are often concerned about clipping and the associated power losses if they oversize the DC up to the full 133%. So this technical brief uh, goes into a 25 year lifespan of the system and stuff like that and uh, does some measurements and estimates uh, you know, the maximum energy over the time. Basically, uh, the IQ uh, 7A, which is a 349 watt peak, so even their highest output microinverter can't actually match my 370 watt panels for a 1000 watt per square meter solar insulation or solar irradiance. So it's it's interesting, but they've got all sorts of things showing you how, you know, this is like standard in industry practice. But the bottom line is, will my 295 watt peak microinverters clip on my 370 watt panels? Well, the answer is here in Sydney with my elevation and you know everything else, yes, it will clip. But how many days average per year will it clip and how much impact will that make on my actual energy, total energy output over the year, because ultimately that's all you care about. If, if you're clipping a little bit per day, but you gain some uh, extra percentage efficiency increases somewhere else, as we might talk about, then hey, you might actually get more from your system by actually uh, derating it like this or oversizing your system or undersizing your microinverters uh, compared to your panel. So stick around for the end because I am going to show you some uh, data that I've uh, got on my old system which will apply to my new system and will answer the question of how many days out of the year or we can roughly expect uh, my microinverters to clip the output at 295 watts. And let's go down to the data, electrical properties. Now. Electrical properties is two types. This is the STC or standard testing conditions and the electrical properties are NMOT. That's a uh, nominal module operating temperature, right? And they specify these at different solar irradiance. Um, so the STC uh, panels, when you buy them, the marketing spec is always, or pretty much always the STC or standard testing conditions, which assumes that you're going to get a thousand watts per square meter solar irradiance or solar insulation. The sun is going to put that amount of power into your panels. But down here, if you use the NMOT uh, electrical properties, then it, it only assumes eight, uh, 800 watts per square meter. And by coincidence, that just so happens to be where my IQ7 Plus uh, N-phase microinverters are rated in comparison to that. But how many days a year will I get over 800 watts per square meter and they'll actually clip? Hmm. There it is, 370 watts output at 1,000 square meters or at uh, 800 watts per square meters, you're going to get 277 watts output from each panel. So that's actually comfortably under the 295 watts peak. So those IQ7 Plus microinverters, if you're only getting 800 watts per square meter, Sure enough, I like these in microinverters and never clip. There's no point of buying more expensive and higher rated output power microinverters if you're not getting that sort of solar insulation. But anyway, um, I don't really have a choice because Enphase don't actually manufacture a 370 watt output microinverter. And it's a pretty safe bet that if they did, it's going to be significantly more expensive than the 295 watt IQ7 Plus version because you know it's really difficult to design these things and over temperature and you know all sorts of stuff. Apparently you can actually get microinverters rated uh, for 370 watts or more or 400 uh, watts from other uh, manufacturers, but are they worth it? Well, I don't know. Let's look at some data. Let's have some fun. So let's just have a quick look here. There's uh, many places you can get solar irradiance data or solar insulation data. I think this one's cool though. This is actually a live map for, to, uh, no, this is 6th oh, six of April. I actually update it for today. And you can see it sweep across Australia like this. And you'll notice that the graph down the bottom down here is up to a thousand watts per square meter. So, so if you see it go really pinky pink pink, then you know you're getting a thousand watts per square meter. So Sydney, you know, around about here somewhere. Yep, 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 it's getting pinky, pinky, but you know, clouds and everything else get in the way. If you're installing these panels in the top half of Australia, a good part of the year, you're probably gonna be getting your thousand watts uh, per square meter or, you know, like 900 and something. But granted, we are in April here now, so we're well out of summer.
But having said that, let's have a look at some data here, shall we? This is my new uh, Enphase system. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter, and you should if you want updates on uh, all this uh, sort of stuff, you'll notice that the orange one here is the consumption, and it's going negative. And there's a reason why it's negative here, and I fixed it, as you can see over here. <laughs> I'm now, like, at, at the moment, right now, um, my house is only consuming 168 watts. There you go. We've got two fridges running, nothing else. Nobody's home. And the uh, blue one there is it's current. My system is currently generating 5.196. But don't get excited because I also made a change about on, on this day here that this blue output now includes both of my systems. So it includes the N phase one uh, at five kilowatts plus it includes the uh, three existing three kilowatt system as well. These days back here do not show that. So if you can see here, I did actually clip, well, let's get the confuser out, 295 times 14 equals 4.13. We got 4.172. So, you know, there's a little bit of measurement there and all sorts of stuff. But basically, on a day in April, my system has basically hit the limit. Enphase microinverter solution using the IQ7 Plus uh, inverters will never output more than that. That's the maximum I will ever get even during the peak of summer, the biggest solar irradiance day possible. Yeah, it, it just won't get more than 4.12 for my 5.1 kilowatt system. Aww. And I've got to admit, I kind of find that, as an engineer, I find that a bit offensive, you know, but it's, it always comes down to practicality. How much do you want to pay for your inverter system? Is it worth paying where just to get a little peak on you know, a couple of dozen days a year or something like that, right? Is it worth it? And then it only peaks, you know, <laughs> it should look a nice smooth curve like this, but the sun came in and out and etc. And I had these issues here. So really, it's only the tip. If you're going to clip, it's only going to be the tip. So you're only losing a relative, like single digit percentages of uh, your daily output on the most extreme days. And this is why many people will actually, uh, under, you know, overrate or derate their uh, system, inverter system compared to their panels, especially if you're living in another country. Let's choose another country. United Kingdom. Here we go. UK is pretty crap for sun, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's not. Oh, but pink. A little bit of pink. A little bit of pink, but it's not like extreme pink. But it's not doing too bad. You might get like maybe 800 watts at the moment. Now shut up, Dave. Show us the data that you've analyzed. Well, okay, um, if you go to this article here, it says, you know, it makes a claim, because panels rarely produce as much power as their rated capacity, is it as possible to add, add, add extra panels with very little power being lost, extra capacity, blah, 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 blah. And somebody on Twitter bought this up, and I've contacted Enphase themselves, and they've said, you know, and not many days per year is going, you know, in Sydney is going to be over uh, that nominal, uh, you know, 80% uh, figure. So, well, I've got an existing system here, which I've been measuring for like the last seven and a half years thing with occasional data loss, because I have to upload all this data manually, bulk upload manually, so I've missed a little bit. But anyway, I was able to take all this data, analyze it, and because I used LG panels before, and because my new system is in the, you once again using LG panels, but now 370 watts versus 250, nominally rated at 1000 watts uh, per square meter, in exactly the same, like they're installed in exactly the same location, I can expect the exact same, basically the same results from my new 5 kilowatt system as I got on my old 3 kilowatt system. And, ta-da! I have analyzed the data. What I got here, I outputted 1,980 days worth of data down here. And uh, as I said, there's a few missing days. Um, but basically, it, this system did give out the peak power. Now, because it samples it, uh, well, it's, it gives that figure every five minutes. So I don't know what happens within that five minutes. If it actually peaks high, you know, does it actually take the peak within the five minutes? I'm not actually sure. But anyway, um, you know, it, this is pretty good data that we've got over 1,980 days. So that takes in many years and all the seasonal variations and everything else. And I've uh, actually sorted of this from lowest. So the lowest is 96 watts total system output from my three kilowatt system all the way with LBJ right up to, come on, you can do it. There it is, right? Up to three kilowatts. Yes, my system did actually, my nominal three kilowatt system did actually output three kilowatts on like seven days out of that whole lot. Um, and, and then it got very close on 
Lots of them. But how many days and how many over that 80% figure, i.e. how, uh, you know, with my new system, with the 295 watt microinverters that clips at 4.13 kilowatts, how, can, how many days over the life of my system can we, or per year, roughly, can we expect them to actually clip? Well, I've done my histogram here, and let's take a look at it. So I took all that data, and on the y-axis here, this is the number of days occurrence that gave an output on the x-axis here within this bin. All right, so I've binned them. So this highest peak here, there were 210 days here that outputted between 2,396 watts and 2,496 watts. Jeez, I should have made that an even multiple, shouldn't I? Uh, anyway, so if my system will only ever, according to the Enphase data sheet, ever output 4.13 kilowatts maximum, uh, then we can actually uh, work out, because this is a three kilowatt system, but we can extrapolate that to the five kilowatt system. So 14 times... 370 watts, which we know we can actually get the solar insulation. We can actually get 370 watts out of each one of those panels, damn it. So 5180 times uh, 0.8 or 80%, 4144, um, which turns out to be 3000 times 80%, 2400. So it translates to 2400. So basically, it'll be the largest one here and all these additional days. On all of these days, we can expect our new 5 kilowatt system to peak. How many days total is that? That is uh, 796 days out of no 1,980 days, or around about, you know, 38%. We're pushing 40% of days over the, all the time I've been measuring this, that we, we can expect my new Enphase system to clip. So that's actually, you know, that's quite substantial. But once again, how much power am I actually losing? Well, unfortunately, I won't be able to cover that in this video because that is harder to analyze. But I'll see if I can find like a really good day that's close to that three kilowatt peak there. Whew. See, I get days like this, like <laughs> I haven't found one yet that's perfect at, you know, no clouds, perfect curve at three kilowatts. But you can see like this one peaks here, like, you know, like, it peaks right there at 2.93, you know, right at three. So you can actually see there's, if you extrapolate the curve anyway, I'll keep going. So you get perfect ones, but they're actually below three kilowatts, even though it's only a week later. But the solar insulation changes on a daily basis. And that's the thing, you know, it can change like, uh, like 20%, but actually between days. So it's quite substantial. And I know what you're saying, Dave, just go to these perfect days here. You know, they've got the most out. It turns out most of them are only like little short peaks at that because the clouds are moving over, but it happens to be really high solar insulation on those days. So you get like extreme days like this where like, like it really is, like it probably, I might have even, this day might have even clipped my existing three kilowatt inverter. For example, you notice there's a reason why some days like didn't get like though I actually capped at three kilowatts. So technically my old system was clipped as well. You know, a handful of days and this looks like one of them. Like these peaks are way up there, really extreme stuff. Then you get perfect days like this and they got slow solar insulation. Urgh. And by the way, you'll notice that the, these highest days um, here, they're, uh, but once again, obviously, they're in summer. They're anywhere from like, oh, you know, ladyish October through to like March and things like that. But, you know, yeah, it's pretty much you know, over summer as you'd expect. And summer here, of course, is uh, December through to uh, end of February. And I, I think 2017 seems to be a particular year. There's actually quite a significant number of 2017s in here. So maybe I should check that out. Surely we can draw a smooth curve on the top of that one. Hold your tongue at the right angle. Okay, I'm, I'm actually going to take this day here and then I'm just going to print it out and like draw a line over it. It's just, uh, just done dicking around. Okay, so let's just take that data. What I'll do is I'll print that out and then we'll draw a line over the top of that and then we'll estimate, because it does peak at three kilowatts and we can extrapolate that to 5.1 kilowatts for the new system, we can work out like, you know, roughly what uh, percentage of, uh, you know, like energy over the day that we're going to lo lose because it's the area under the curve, of course. Yes, I'm a green screen. Ta-da! Here we go. Here's my dodgy as graph of uh, the estimating five kilowatt uh, system that we're going to get. 
Obviously, it's going to peak up here, and I've drawn the 80% mark, which is where my new microinverters will uh, peak. And as you can see, it's a significant amount of the day. This is, once again, assuming that we get absolutely perfect solar insulation. We do get 370 watts out of the panels, so the nominal 5.1 something kilowatt system will only output... 4.13 absolute maximum, but you can see it's a significant amount. Now, if you compare that red shaded area that's going to clip with the area, all the area underneath here, I don't know, work out, guesstimate, hold your tongue at the right angle, have a shot at guessing um, how much that area is. Yeah, so it's in that line under there like that, just imagine it's nice and smooth, you might lose, eh, you know, 8% you know, maybe pushing 10% or something like that. Once again, in Sydney or Northern Australia in a high solar insulation area on a really good day, as I said, it can vary. You know, I can get easily get, you know, a big number of my days. In fact, the majority of my days, as we saw, only 40, uh, under 40% of the days, 38% of days are actually going to clip at all. Otherwise, we'll be capturing everything. But um, in this particular case, like you might, might be wasting this little peak here, this one here, you know, these little peaks in there like that. And it's not a big deal. So you might be thinking, well, if my inverter is going to clip on a good day, what is the point of buying these, you know, really high output, uh, you know, fancy pantsy 370 watt or more panels? Why not just buy, like, cheaper panels if they still make them? Because technology progresses and generally it's hard to find old stock. But if you can, why not buy the cheaper ones? I'm here to tell you that's a bad idea. Don't do it. Get the highest output panels that you can. Of course, don't get absolute bleeding edge because you might pay a, you know, a real price premium. Get the best bang per buck, highest output panels that you can afford. Why? because uh, you're not going to waste it. They're going to be, the higher output panels are going to be more efficient on the vast majority of, well, they're going to be more efficient all the time, but especially on the vast majority of the days when you aren't clipping and losing anything. So if you go for these, like, you know, old, even if you could get them still, these older design panels, uh, you know, 340 watts, you know, 330 or 325 or something like that, even if you could get 290s. No, don't do it because these are exactly the same size panels so you're not gaining any like space or anything like that but they're simply less efficient you get like 340 watts or 325 watts at a thousand watts per square meter your solar radiance is going to be exactly the same so for even if it, you know it's, it's really bad today and you're only getting 500 watts per square meter a couple hundred watts per square meter because it's really cloudy or whatever you're going to get more out of the larger rated panels and your inverter is going to suck up all of that uh, extra power. So yeah, you get the highest output rating panels you can. Let's say you had your heart set on these Enphase microinverters because they're really cool um, and you can only get uh, like, you know, 290 watts or 340 uh, watt ones which match, uh, which happen to match these panels here if you get the 7 plus, then no, don't fall into the trap. Overrate your system and get the larger panels. Don't let the choice of your inverter dictate it because most of the time you are not going to get that absolutely perfect solar irradiance due to clouds, natural variation from day to day, even during the day, it can vary a lot. And even if you are going to clip a bit, you're still going to get a huge advantage from getting the larger panels. That's why people overrate this system. And I believe this is common in Europe, I'll leave it down below, where you know, you've got no chance in hell of getting your 370 watts out of your 370 watt panel ever so if you want like a five kilowatt system you install 10 kilowatts nominal worth of panels so yeah that's a bit of a bummer but here in australia yeah no wackers we'll get our 10 kilowatts on a good day now i said before that this uh, inverter clipping um there are other advantages because technically overrate your panels compared to your mic or, or i.e. derate your microinverter compared uh, to your nominal panel output, then it might actually operate more efficiently at the extreme. So you might actually gain the extra efficiency in there. Plus, of course, because you're using microinverters, uh, you're going to gain, you can actually see the individual rays, like this one over here, is partially shaded. So this one, before, it would actually bring the entire string down. Say on some graph like this, I don't, you know, it could take me ages to find a good example, but you can see that, you know, when it drops off extreme like this, it could be the sun coming over shading, but I do actually get a very, with my old system, a very pronounced drop like that because any shading on one panel will pretty much drag down uh, the entire string. So I, I found that it dropped off 
very quickly. I won't now get that with the micro inverters. So you could claim that these micro inverters, even though they're P, you know, you lose some days, you'll lose power on the peaks. You might actually gain those, you know, ex that extra energy uh, over time by individually getting the panels. If one panel gets shaded, if it gets bird crap on it, or it gets whatever, filthy, dirty uh, for some reason, or <laughs> it gets hit by a meteorite, then, uh, you know, it's not going to drag down your entire system. Now, Enphase have actually given me some data on the IQ7 Plus micro inverter here. So you can see that the efficiency is here at 10% power level, only 93% efficient. Uh, whereas the data sheet, if you read the data sheet for the micro inverter, it just says 97%, and that's it. It doesn't actually give you the parametric uh, efficiency curves. And this is where comes in the art of matching a particular micro inverter, or applies to uh, string inverters as well, to your particular panels the voltage output level, the maximum current output output level, you know, maximum how many cells they have and, you know, all that uh, sort of jazz. So it can vary anywhere from 93% up to, no, it looks like it goes right up. So only at the low end does it actually uh, drop down there. And a voltage nominal, we're talking 94 to 97% or something like that. So there's going to be variability in the efficiency of your inverter based on uh, your input voltage, which comes from your solar insulation and, and the construction of the panels and number of cells and also then the technology you use, blah, 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 blah. It actually gets quite complicated when you want to try and match your microinverters. I mean, I, ideally, if money's no object, if you've got a 5.1 kilowatt system like I do, you want 5.1 kilowatts at least of microinverters so that you never clip. And then you don't have to stay awake at night going, oh, geez, I'm losing 0.1% of my power today. You know, cause that can keep you awake at night. So you can say that, like, in some ways, um, like, Enphase have to release this sort of stuff because they don't, actually, if you've got 370 watt panels, which is common as mud, they don't actually sell a matching microinverter with that output power level. So they have to, you know, go to great lengths to explain to you, even people in Australia here, like I could upgrade to the IQ7A microinverters, which is their highest output microinverter, but how much extra energy, not power, how much extra energy over time would I get out? Eh, not much. And they're probably, I don't know the price difference, they might be 10, 15, 20% difference in price or something like that. And if they made a 370 watt micro inverter, well, it could be you know, higher price again. And their, their tests are showing that here in Sydney, clipping is like 0.02% of the time and, you know, stuff like that, which uh, I like probably don't doubt. Sounds like it's in the order, sounds like it's in the ballpark, but I found that it would clip on 38% of days, but that's just days. But as I said, like you've got to take each one of these like little individual peaks into account and stuff like that. So overall, they could be right that, you know, if you calculate it all up, 0.02% um, of the days, I don't know. Leave your thoughts down below. Have you analyzed your system? Is it, you know, is it a D-rated uh, system or overrated like uh, this one? Has it got like a DC to AC ratio greater than 100%? Because my existing system was smack on 100%. And that's, as I said, the most common system here in Australia for string inverters is you put in a five kilowatt system, you get a five kilowatt inverter. That's just, you know, how it was done. Um, but with microinverters, which are a more expensive solution because there's more of them per panel and you do get great advantages out of them in terms of like shading, as I uh, showed you, you know, like this panel over here could ordinarily bring down the entire system. There's a bird nesting on top of it or something uh, doing whatever, then yeah, it's going to drag your whole system down, but it won't if you've got a microinverter, uh, which will output optimal efficiency for each individual panel. And the whole argument with this uh, overrating is the advantages of the microinverters will actually gain you the extra output power to compensate for if they clip and loss. But not only is it a total calculation of you know, energy over time, it's also a payback period as well, because microinverters are a more expensive uh, solution, but they gain extra percentage advantages. But in this particular case, they might actually clip depending on which country and which, in which city you're in. So, you know, just because you're in Australia, it could be like in Tasmania or something. They, get, they don't get any sun, do they? So when it comes down to it, there's not a huge amount in it. And this is why they are specified and based on their data, correctly specified a 295 watt max output microinverter for my 370 watt panels. But 
yeah, I've now got to sleep at night knowing that on 38% uh, of days nominally per year, it's clipping. <laughs> How much energy? I don't know. You can go, like, it, it, it's not a huge amount. As I said, like, it's single digit percentage stuff. But if you're paying, 50% more for your micro inverters or whatever because you want, just want the warm fuzzy that you're getting all the output power uh, possible from your panel um, each and every day of the year, then, well, how much does that impact your payback calculation and stuff? It's, it's complicated stuff. <laughs> anyway, that is micro inverter. Uh, micro inverter clipping, derating, oversize, panel oversizing, whatever you want to call it. It's actually quite complex business. And let us know in the comments down below, is this like common in your country? I believe this is like common as mud in Europe. Like everyone does this because they don't get that solar irradiance like we get in Australia. Look at it. Look, look at it go. What a Bobby Dazzler. December. Look at that. Look, look, look at Australia for December. Look at that pink as. Just like all day. It's just pink, pink, pink. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. I was going to do like a more polished version of this, but I, you know, with the whiteboard and everything, but I, yeah, talking Dave head, it'll do. So anyway, I hopefully I'll have a video coming up. So stick around for that. Might go on my second channel. Maybe subscribe to EVblog2 on why I was getting negative here. It's not because they put the current uh, transformers in backwards. Um, as some people speculated, no, it's it's actually rather an interesting thing when you have a hybrid system like this with uh, two different monitoring solutions with two different panels, but you want to combine the output power. This sort of negative stuff, pretty much inevitable, and how I solved it. I'll show you that in a future video. Anyway, catch you next time.